welcome to a new weekly video today i am back with my favorites of the month of march and i can't believe it's already getting to the end of the month i was stating whether i should do this video this week or next week but i had quite a lot of things already and i don't think i'm going to buy anything new next week so i figured i'm just going to do it now uh, apologies about my attire right now. This is my chunky cardigan I wear in the house. And since it's a video where I tell you about my favorite things and this is one of my favorite things to be cozy in my house, I figured it was okay. I'm also not wearing any makeup because if you watch my vlogs, you know I like to keep it real. And right now when I'm filming, I have a tiny window between the moment my husband comes back home and the moment the boys go to bed where I can get him to mind the boys long enough to film this video. So that's how it has to be. <laughs> so, there is quite a lot this month. Uh, and as the previous month, half of it is physical item I can show you. And the other half is things like TV shows and movies and things like that. I'm going to start with the TV shows. There are three TV series this month. And I'm going to do them in an order which is logical in the way I got to them in my head. The first one is Broadchurch. Uh, Broadchurch is a TV show, it's potentially one of my favorite TV shows ever. And season three has started again about three, four weeks ago. I can't remember exactly. I think there might have been four episodes. It's on Monday night on ITV1. And uh, it's kind of a detective show. Um, it's not the kind of show where you can watch every season independently. You can only watch it in the right order. But if you haven't seen it, I would strongly recommend it. There is not a lot of very graphic stuff in it. Um, but there are some things that can trigger some issues in people, just so you know. Uh, there are There is uh, child abuse involvement in the first one. There is uh, rape in the third one. Second one, I can't remember exactly if there are any kind of those things. But all these things are references that come back in throughout the show or in all the seasons. So if you have an issue with those ones, please bear in mind that there are child abuse and rape um, topics inside the show. Um, the next show is something I've been wanting to watch but I was scared to watch because um, I suffer from uh, night terrors and it means that when they flare up, my, my, my brain goes insane at night and it, it's just very hard to get under control. One thing I need to avoid are graphic images that could feed my brain those images to make it worse at night. <coughs> so any shows with zombies or anything like that, I tend to avoid. But, strangely, the next two shows I'm going to talk to you about involve zombies in very different ways. The first one I decided to watch is the one I've been wanting to... I, I've heard a lot of people talk about it, they're saying that it was funny, it was great and all that. And it's Santa Clarita Diet. I love Drew Barrymore and I just... I don't know, I just wanted to watch it. So I'm part of quite a few groups with a lot of people from different backgrounds. And I just asked from the people who have seen it, do they think it's extremely graphic? And one girl said to me, if you can handle the end scene of such episode, you can handle the whole show, the whole season anyway. There's only season one so far. So I decided to give it a go and I thought if it's too much, I can just turn it off and just, and that's it. I can, you know, I don't have to sit through it if I can't watch it. And it was actually very, it's done in a very fun way and it's, it's, it's funny. It is funny. There are a few graphic scenes, but the way it's done, because it's like a comedy, it's, you know, it's not the same. And then I thought, since I can handle that type of zombie thing, there's one show, which is the obvious one when you think about zombies, <laughs> which I've been avoiding, uh, avoiding for, for years because I was too scared of being scared. <laughs> and it's The Walking Dead. Now, one of my neighbors is a massive fan of the show. And he does the school run with me. And several times he's mentioned if you've not seen The Walking Dead, it's great. It's not just about zombies, not a gory thing for the sake of being gory. There are some scenes, but it's all about the people in it. I've heard that quite a few times and I was running out of shows to watch and I thought, you know what, I was able to watch a zombie show. I can maybe 
watch it. So I asked James because James has a fair idea of what I can handle or not. And he was always saying, no, don't watch it. No, don't watch it. And then the thing is that if it's gore for just the sake of gore with no, you know, point, I can detach it from reality. So that's fine. But what was worrying me is the gory with real, real people. That was... And James explained to me that there were some episodes where you can clearly see that they go all out with the blood and stuff like that. So what I've been doing that those episodes I've been watching on my tablet. Uh, it's on Amazon Prime, the first five seasons. And um, I use my tablet to watch stuff, TV shows and all, all the time because it means that the TV is accessible for everyone. It's a small screen now that if it's not, if there's a scene or anything that I don't want the boys to see, I can easily turn it around or close it or, you know, it's easy enough to do. And in my office, I just put it while it's actually sitting there. Do you know, I have a little um, stand like this. Excuse the stomping of the stairs. Owen's room is right upstairs and James putting them to bed. And there's one in the kitchen too. So I've been literally watching non-stop for the past six, oh, for the past week, roughly. And I'm now um, at the start of, well, I've watched two episodes of season five. So the first, the first season is very short, but um, I've been marathoning through them. There's still two seasons to go after that one. Um, and I really, really like it. Now, there are some scenes where I actually leave the tablet to the side and I know from the noises and when the scene is over, so I don't I don't look. Um, it is it is gory at point, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, but um, I can detach myself from it, kind of. Uh, I need to start not watching it too late in the evening though, because last night I started to have dreams that were more and more <laughs> feeding from that, so I need to, yeah, not do that to myself. But yeah, so that's the three shows that I've really enjoyed this month. Next thing uh, is a movie, and this movie is probably still in the cinema as you're watching this, and it's Logan. Uh, if you don't know what it is, it's the Wolverine character. It's the, kind of the show of the later stage of his life, let's say. Um, I really wanted to see that show because I love all the X-Men movies and stuff like that. All the comic book and, you know, character stuff, I really like them. But there are some things I didn't expect from that movie. I didn't know it was going to be like, let's go for the gory again. <coughs> Whatever the, do you know in the beginning when you have that screen with the like age restriction and the start of the movie and all that and it said, I think it said, it said 15. Yes, it was 15 rated 15 or something. Yeah, it was 15. And because I'm thinking The Walking Dead is 18. That might be sick number. No, it was 15. And because I've seen the previous movies, I was thinking, 15 is a bit harsh, really. It's, I mean, 12, okay, but 15 seems quite harsh. Then I watched the movie. And no, it's not. <laughs> it's definitely not suitable and for under 15. There is a lot of violence, uh, very graphic violence. Um, but I have to say that I rarely cry in those movies. <laughs> And that movie, I don't know what, I can't explain it. I remember at the end, I felt like the end, I'm not going to, tell, I'm not going to spoil anything, don't you worry. I felt like the whole thing was brutal, but not for, well, the scenes are brutal, but it's not the point, it's not what I mean. Like, emotionally, I felt it was brutal because you go on a very steep roller coaster, and then the ending just cuts off. And it was just, I didn't have a chance to adjust to my own emotions. <laughs> I don't know if it's me, but it's just, I was very surprised feeling like this. And then the only thing that could come out of my mouth was, oh my god, oh wow. And then I, I was just speechless. And I was, we were in the car and it took me a while to get back. I don't know, I just, anyway, it was a very good movie. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. Um... Next thing, which I can't really show you, but you would have seen in a vlog from the weekend of the... So it would be the vlog of the 18th and 19th of March. Owen and I uh, very often try some of... Do you know the tasty recipe? You see the videos going all around YouTube and uh, Facebook, I mean, sorry. Uh, it's basically a one minute video where you can see from above, like all the ingredients being put, everything being stirred and it's like a sped through, sped through, <laughs> speed it up process of the recipe 
and for Owen it's very good because you can see all the ingredients being you know and so what we do is that we take my tablet again <laughs> once again on one of these stands and we put one ingredient then we pause the video prepare the next one pause the video etc etc in this video I will link it down below but you can see us making it in that vlog I will link the vlog <laughs> as well uh, it was a Swedish meatball one pot pasta or something like that along those lines and it was actually really nice we all loved it and it did us for now Alfie and Owen would have smaller portions so it would do for four people like the recipe as it is for standard portions but with children there it did us a full portion for each of us two small portions for the kids and then then at, at in the dinner for dinner James and I had a smaller portion each so I did just a meal for everybody for the whole day. The boys had just plain pasta in the evening. It was very nice. It's like there's like an earthquake. Can you hear this? This is just them going to bed. Anyway, just ignore the noise in the background. I see that's why I can't even pretend to put makeup on and all that because it's impossible. <laughs> so anyway. Next thing is all scrapbooking related, so I know it's not relevant to everybody, but it's been a big thing for me this month, so I'm going to talk about it, because I decided to subscribe to the Planner Society kit. This comes from a website called Scarlet Lime, and it's, a, it's based in the US, and it's basically a pack. Now, I will include... It's hard to show everything there, but it's a big pack with loads of things inside. I will put a picture here of everything that's included in the pack. It's a monthly subscription to get it posted to the UK, to internationally basically, to all of the US. It costs around, it works out about £30 to £32 depending on the exchange rate, um, including the postage. Uh, otherwise, it's 20 I think it's $24.95 to start with, in case you're in the US. And I'm not too sure about the postage then. But it, you get so much. I mean, I know it's a big amount of money to pay monthly. But to be honest, I've subscribed to a lot of stationery boxes before. And this one is double the price I would usually pay. But you get, in value, you get a lot. Like, a lot. If you're interested in seeing more details about this, subscription um, I will link down below <laughs> again the website subscribe to this and um, link to my other channel which is a stationery and planner related channel because I have made a video showing you every single thing like an unboxing and I will be making a video on how I'm using all the craft tips you get inside so on along the same lines I got now you're gonna have to bear with me <laughs> This is already all cut up, but it's basically a pack with papers, stickers, um, and little labels, just all for cross booking. And now my phone is going, and I've put it on the do not disturb thing. It shouldn't go. Come on. Anyway, I'm going to show you what I've made with this. You will have seen, like, you get a brief idea if you've been um, following my vlogs because you will have seen me making it a little bit but same again you can see all these things in my other channel so I've been making a garden journal and I've used all the scrapbooking paper to make like dividers covers for the booklets like this like this um like a gnome one And more of the covers. Anyway, if you want to see more detailed stuff again, just go to the other channel. But um, this is a pack that I found very handy. I probably used about half of it, I would say. Um, and you can find them in a shop called The Organized Hedgehog on Etsy. There are a lot of stockists, but I would strongly recommend this one because I know the girl who owns it and uh, her prices are actually some of the best I've seen out there. So same again, linked down there. But um, I've been using this one and I've also got, which I haven't cut into yet, this one, which is called Just Be You and it's a scrapbooking paper, but it's like it has the same stickers and papers and I'm going to do more planner stuff. But the colors, oh my god, I've been eyeing this one up for a few months. It's been sitting in my basket on the website. 
and I didn't get it. I had actually little bits from this kit all separate and I didn't get it and then some became out of stock and then I realized there's a pack with everything inside it so I will do that. Anyway, I am rambling. Last but not least is a book. Now this one is in French but it's also available in English so I'll just have a book there with the <laughs> titles in English. It's by a French author called Anna Gavalda. If you have never read, read any of her books, I've loved every single one I've read. I absolutely love this one. I'm going to tell you the truth about this book. I bought it in France in the summer, not last summer, but the summer before. So it's quite a long time ago. I read maybe one chapter on the plane coming back. And after that, life took over and I left this book in a corner and completely forgot about it until I just came across it recently and I thought hold on I've never finished this and I read it all I couldn't stop uh, in English for some reason so there are three short stories in this book well, not short stories like the first one is 200 pages long so um, one is called Billy and the um, the title is the title is sold as a single book in English. So in, in English you can buy this whole book in two books. One has the first story which is called Billy with IE at the end. And the second one is called actually what it says there. It's called Life Only Better. And in the English version, for, I don't know why, it only has the last two stories of this one in French. Um, I don't want to give much away, it's very hard to describe, but basically in each of these stories there are stories about three different characters. The first one is a girl who is 13 years old when she starts the book, when you're at the start of the story, but she's much older after that. Second one is about a 24 year old girl and the last one is about a 26 year old boy. What they have in common, even if their stories are completely different and they are not related, it's that at some point in their life, something happens, a, sm a small thing which may seem insignificant and it, that event changes, changes their life drastically. And I just, I don't know, I just love the way the author is very good at characters and it's something I love in books. It's when characters are realistic and everything about them seems like, oh, I'm not reading just a book written by some author about a 13 year old because the girl is narrating the story the language used is matching you know her age and each character it seems just i don't know <laughs> i don't know how to talk about this without sounding like a, a weirdo but i find to me characters and the way they are used in a book will make me read a book or not that's the one thing to me the characterization in a book is the most important thing to me. If you have an interesting character, they can have a very boring story. If the character is interesting, it will keep me reading. You can have a ex really exciting story, but if I can't grasp every single tiny detail of the character, I will not want to continue reading it. And to me, this author is extremely good at doing that. So, if you want to give that a go, Billy. And Life Only Better by Anna Gavalda. I would strongly recommend those. That's it for this video, which was complete mayhem. Anyway, I will see you in the next video next week. I'm not too sure what it will be yet. Uh, I haven't decided. I have a few ideas, but I haven't set my mind on any in particular. Apologies for this face, the noise around. This is life. This is what happens in my house. Uh, I will see you in... The next video so the next one will be tomorrow for you if you're watching all of them it will be a vlog and otherwise just if you don't know my schedule yet i upload four videos a week three are vlogs and one is a video like this with a lifestyle video and the lifestyle video goes up either on wednesday or thursday night and the other videos go on monday and saturday night at 5 pm for all of them so that's four videos in the end yeah, that's it. <laughs> I'm gonna stop rambling. <laughs> I'm gonna go and put my feet up and watch probably a little bit more of The Walking Dead, but not too late, so I don't have nightmares. And I don't dream that I have adopted a zombie daughter that destroys my house. 
this is what happened last night. Anyway, I'm gonna stop the rambling. I will see you in the next video. Bye!